Hi, this is Greg Koopman. In this video, I'm going to show you how to export data to, from a SQL Server table to a AWS S3 file, or files in this case. Okay, so here we are in our Talon, uh, in a, a Talon package, and it's a very simple package. Now, this is really a part of a bigger set of packages. You're going to do more to do need to do more with your package than just this piece. Uh, but this is the first step in, um, in moving data. Let's say you want to move data to a Redshift. Um, a lot of times it's much easier and faster to move the data instead of row by row over to Redshift. It's easier to copy it into files, store it up on the S3 file system on AWS, then do another extraction down to the Redshift. And that ends up being a lot faster uh, than just going from uh, SQL Server to Redshift. Although I'm not showing you the whole process here, I do show it to you in other videos. So please watch those other videos uh, if you have more thoughts about it. But this is just one segment. So this is the part where we move the data from SQL Server up to and store it in S3 files. So here we are in SQL Management Studio and in SQL Management Studio I'm going to move a fax sales table over um, you know over to the S3 as I've been saying. Um, let's just look at this table a little bit. So I'm going to do a select and as we see we have data, date, a date key, not a very good looking date key actually, kind of uh, date time key. Um, a channel key, a store key, product key, promotion key, etc., and a bunch of data. All right, and it ends up with a load date and update. These are very, you know, it doesn't really matter what's in this table. I'm just going to show you how this works. So, what I'm going to do instead of there's like millions and millions of rows here, I'm just going to move 3,500 of these uh, rows over to the file system uh, just to keep this simple and quick. Okay, so what do we do? First of all, I have a connection, a SQL Server connection here which is, let's just take a look at these settings. Nothing big. Um, I have it set to my SQL Server. I have a video on this, um, on SQL Server and how to troubleshoot the connection and how, what problems you might have. So you might want to watch that if you have any problems setting up your connection. So I set up the connection. Uh, this is my server host. This is my port. I'm going to use DBO as a schema. My database name is POC template DW large for many, etc. That's my, my, my username in this case is YouTube login and I have a password. No big deal there. Okay. So what I generally do is set that my connection up first and I'll just run that standalone, just that one task and uh, make sure that's working fine. No errors. Okay. So that's working fine. So now my next step is I have an input. Now this is my, as you look here, you see it says uh, DB input one, and I'm using Microsoft SQL Server. Inside of um, maybe the enterprise version of, uh, of Talon, you might see something a little different than that. Um, but when I do set this up, what I do is I set it up using this concept, TMS uh, SQL, and I choose the MS SQL row like this. Okay, but when it comes in, it comes in as DB row one. Okay, so don't get that too confused. It's still Microsoft uh, under the covers there, or unless yes, it's still Microsoft as long as you have this set to Microsoft here. Okay, so uh, just want you to not get confused. And that same thing goes uh, inside with Redshift when we do Redshift. So I'll show that in a different video. Okay, so let's take a look at that input again. The input is very simple. Like I told you prior, I'm going to select the top 3,500 rows of the table. And if we look at this, uh, scoot this up a little bit more, we can see the whole whole select. No big deal here. Um, so we're going to select 3,500 rows. We are then going to move those rows first. We can't move them directly into an S3 bucket, okay, as a file. What it, what uh, S3, what we can do though is put that into a uh, comma, uh, a CSV, a, a delimited file 
over on our Talon server. Now, in my case here, all I'm using is my, I'm using my local system. Uh, my Talon is stored on my local system. I'm not in a, a big company here and have it on a server and all that stuff. But we'll call my C drive or my M drive in this case, uh, where the Talon server is. Okay, so uh, I'm going to store it on the Talon server, which is actually my local drive drives. Okay, so we'll go look at that component. And by the way, let's go back to the input component. Uh, as you see, it's, it's a very simple format here. Under advanced settings, I haven't done anything. Dynamic settings, uh, view, nothing different. Nothing was changed there. Just in the basic settings tab, I've changed some things. Okay, now I come over to the file output delimited. Okay, and all this stuff could be you. You know, you could set up context variables for all these things, and I recommend you do. But for the case, for the sake of simplicity, and for you know exactly how it's formatted and everything, it's much better if I just present the values the way they are here. Okay, it really is uh, constants here. So the file output, I'm going to put it on my my file name. And notice, you know, Talon puts these these double quotes around a lot of things. So um, you do have to do that. So I'm going to put on my M Talon X for out. And I'm going to call, and the name of the file name is going to be factsales.csv okay even though it's not a true comma separated it's going to be a pipe separated uh, my row separator is going to have a um, line feed and my field separator like I just said instead of a comma it's going to be a pipe I'm not going to use any quoted identifiers or anything like that okay that separate uh, that go around each of the uh, values of the columns uh, so advanced uh, in my advanced settings though I do have a one thing here very important I'm going to split the output into several files so for every thousand rows I'm going to have a new file okay I, I want that to happen because um, you know that that really helps uh, you know a lot of times when, let's say I'm a million a thousand isn't much I mean I got 3500 rows in one file with no problem but for the sake of simplicity, I'm just using a thousand just to show you that it breaks them out. Um, when I want to do a migration or something or, or some big, bigger data, I might make this into a million rows for every file. Okay, I, for some reason, I, I really don't want to have a 20 million row file sitting out there. So I might chop it up into a million rows. Now, I don't have to do anything there. All I have to do to get it chopped up into a million rows each, or a thousand rows each in this case, is check this box, split output into several files, and then uh, put a number, a numeric figure in there for the number of rows. Okay, and that's all I do on this, this uh, particular um, task. I'm doing nothing special. You can add things like a CSV options um, you can have the text enclosures and that kind of thing if you want to add those for if you want to have them quoted uh, all the text enclosed and, and uh, double quotes you can do that uh, I'm not going to do that okay so and then dynamic settings I have nothing there and view nothing and documentation nothing so basically it's a very simple setup here okay so this is going to push the data in this sub job to the output delimited file what you see here is on job okay. What that means is, it doesn't mean do this and then go straight to here. On job, on sub job okay means finish this sub job, then go to this next task, okay? If I said on component okay, as soon as it finishes this one, if it said on component okay, it would go right to here and to there, which I, I don't want to do. I want all of this done first, okay? Because once I push all the files over to my M drive here, um, and it's finished, I'm going to come over here, I want to then read my M drive, and then put copy, do a simple, basically a simple copy, and in this case, it's a TS3 put uh, right onto the S3 uh, bucket and folder that I'm, I'm aiming for. Okay, so let's take a look at that now. So once we're done with these two, we're going to be coming down here and again look at it says T file list so it's going to get a list of files okay and that list of files is very important uh, it's obviously I'm looking at the same directory that I placed the output delimited in here okay remember it's called factsales.csv okay and down here um, I have I use a file mask okay I, I check this box and I use this file mask. Now I want to zoom in here, and what you're going to see here is an asterisk there. So it's a wildcard. So what it's going to do 
is it's going to copy everything that says fact, sales, asterisk, wildcard, that starts with that, and it's going to copy that. Uh, it's going to make a list of those, okay? So if there's 50, if there's 50 files over there, um, but only four of them have fact sales, start with fact sales, uh, it's only going to pull those, those four, okay, into the list, all right? Then, okay, and then let's see, the advanced settings, we don't have anything there. Again, again, simple setup, right? It's just a matter of knowing what the basic... Uh, basic components you have to do and the basic logic here that's the harder part of the whole thing uh and i'm giving that to you right here so that makes it should make it much easier for you than to find out well how exactly do i have to put the do i need to put it can i go directly to s3 and you can't so that this is the mechanism to get this done okay so we're going to take that list of files and for each of those files, I'm going to push each one at a time, those files and the rows in them, over to this TS put one bucket, or rather task. Inside this task, as I, I click on it, you're going to see an access key, which isn't the real access key, and I'm not going to give you that, um, to my AWS account. Okay, so you need to have your access key. Okay, so you fill that out. You have a secret key also for your AWS account. So you're going to use your secret key here. Okay, I'm just going to click on that for a moment. And what you have to do is you have to put it in between these quotes. Okay, so don't just, uh, you know, overwrite the quotes. You have to have those double quotes. So again, and then here's your bucket. Okay, in this case, I, I'm able to put the bucket, which is GC-ETL slash folder name x for out okay all right and from there it's asking me for the key now the key name is i'm going to refer back to that t file list current file so what this does is it's going to say oh this is the list we're iterating through it at, for each iteration as it pushes it across here uh, i need that file name Okay, it might be, it'll probably be called like fax sales zero, fax sales one, fax sales two. But each time it comes across, I need that name. And that name is going to be stored in this, uh, in this expression. Okay, so you need to know this expression. So just looking at this, the main thing you have to know here is that this is T file list one. Okay, which points to, as you see, T file list one. Okay, the name of that um, component. Okay. It might be called T file list two, whatever. All right. So I'm going to come back over here, and th that's that. So now that's what how you fill out the key. All right. Now the file stream, okay, is the M colon, which we remember from here. That's where we're getting the data. Talon X for out, right, and then the name of the current file. Okay. So that's the the whole deal. All right. So that these are very important, and you got to fill them out exactly right. Otherwise, they're not going to work. All right, and that's one of the reasons I'm making this video because it's so easy not to fill something out right. And it takes you a long time to figure it out. Okay, so try to you know really look at it, and even in here you have to look at the you know exactly how the syntax works, uh, even uppercase, lowercase, everything counts. Okay, so here I'm going to say now I could have used an S3 connection up here. I'm not doing that. I'm not using an existing connection in this case. Advanced settings. Okay, there's nothing special here. This is just a default. So again, there's nothing special here. All right. Again, but it's still everything that's here is super important. Okay, that's what you got to remember. It's super important. All right. So let's go ahead and run this thing. And that's really all there is to it. Okay. So I'm gonna run it. Okay. Let's just look at where we're running things to. So for the first place, we're gonna run it to this M talent x for out so let's take a look at that okay so here we are in the m talent x for out and i got one file over there okay the file is called greg test file dot csv that's all that's in there but i want to show you how this all works once i get done with this 3500 um rows are going to go into th basically four files because you get a thousand per file okay so it's going to be three files and then like a half a file, a full file, but a half is many bytes. 
okay when we get through with that then this is going to go and go into this t3 uh, which is called gc dash etl x for out okay so let's go take a look at that okay so here i am up on my um, s3 buckets of my aws account so here's my a M amazon uh, amazon account and i have gc dash etl which is my bucket right so here's my bucket and then after your buckets of course comes your your folders right so this is the folder okay so again i also have a greg test file dot csv just to have something else in there okay that's that has nothing to do with this project i just wanted to show that there's something in there uh so there's the file so we have that's all we got in there right now so let's go back to our, our job and run it and let's see if these things populate okay one thing I also failed to mention is there's a, I've got to include headers. So I'm up, all the column names are going to be a header in here, okay? Okay, I'm about to run it. So let's run it. And I think it should run very quickly. There's only 3,500 rows. As you see, this is flickering. There's my 3,500 rows. Exit code zero. That means it's finished okay, and without errors. So let's go see what our, um, our folders look like. So first, looking at our X for out file folder, here we go. We got our file fax sales zero, fax sales one, two, and there we go. There's our and if we open one of these up, we should see about a thousand rows, like in our first one. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. It'll open in Excel, okay? It's gonna open this way because if it had commas, uh, separators, it would open up in its own each column. It doesn't. I can do really quickly to do that. I can just highlight the first row because every all this data really is this in the first row, right? So I can open up that first, or just highlight the first row, go to data above, go to text to columns. It says delimited already, right? But it has it doesn't have the right delimiter. So I'm gonna say other, and I'm gonna give it a a pipe, right? And now it should be fine. Now it just pushes everything out into the right places, right? Okay, so that's our data. And as you see, we got the header in the first row. No big deal. Then you're a bunch of data, right? Bunch of rows. Okay, let's go ahead and, and take a look at our AWS uh, folder. And as you see, there's nothing here, but that's because I need to refresh it. So remember, refresh it. So I hit my refresh button in there. Oh, there it is. So I got my four files, one, two, three, four, just like it, just like the job did. Okay, and that's good. So we can go into one of these and I could download this. Okay, uh, but it's the same file. It's the same file that was in the other. So that's good. So now the thing is, what I want to point out is one thing that can happen here. And this is important when you go further down the road. Um, and that is, when you do the file input component, one thing you need to be careful. You gotta have your, your schema. And I, this could be this gets this is a hard part is to get that schema right, right? So you get your schema in there. You got you know it has to match up with what your query is doing. And what you're gonna see is some date date times in here, okay? And sometimes with red later on, like when I bring this into Redshift from S3. Um, it wants to have this this mm like if this is a small m two small m's uh, anything like 10 and 11 and 12 those aren't going to come in correctly as months um, you need the capital mm to get the 10 11 and 12 the hh capital hh helps you bring in uh, times in military time or 24 hour time okay small hh uh, keeps it at 12 hours which is uh, not that suitable so you want to get the capital HH so these are important to be right because you'll, you'll get nailed by this later on when you try to bring that s3 file into something else so I just want to point that out to you that this formatting is pretty important very important okay so um, that's it so we, we accomplished our goal in this little segment and um, we've got our 35 rows we've got our four different files and they went all in the same right places so we're ready for another step thanks for watching this video and i hope it helped you